Hello viewers, welcome to my channel. I'm Hasha Ali Khan. So this is the last video on set theory. Four more problems are left: 15, 16, 17, 18. And these four problems will complete the topic set theory. So I have explained you in detail the basics of set theory. What are the set operations regarding union, intersection, complement? All these things I have explained. So I'm concluding by giving the lecture in this video that marks the end of set theory so I'll, I'll start the next problem that is problem number 15 so before starting the 15th problem i expect my viewers to have a printout of the problems which are given in the link under my description so before starting the problems have a printout keep it ready now 15th one in a certain college 50 students play cricket 20 play tennis and 10 play both so we have two sets that is students playing cricket students playing tennis so in notational form i can write like this nc c stands for cricket so how many students play cricket 50 and t stands for tennis how many students play tennis nt 20 and c intersection t intersection means both a student playing cricket as well as tennis both games is playing so how many students play both the games 10 so this is the information given cricket 50 uh, tennis 20 and 10 play both now it is asking you how many students play at least one game at least one means either cricket or tennis any one of the game so number of students playing at least one game that is n of C union T C union T this we have to find out this will give you at least one either in C or in T so C union T the formula is N of C plus N of T minus N inter C intersection T C intersection T so N C is 50 N T is 20 and C intersection T is 10. So 50 plus 20 is 70, 70 minus 10 60. The so number of students playing at least one game, either cricket or tennis, is 60. That's it. This is the problem number 15. Now, 16th problem. In a group of 60 students, 35 can speak Hindi, while 25 can speak both Hindi and Telugu. So, total number of students in the class, 60. Number of students speaking Hindi, 35. And number of students speaking both Hindi and Telugu, 25. So, 35 students speak Hindi in the total of 60. And 25 students speak both Hindi and Telugu. And all students can speak at least one language. So, all the students, at least one language, everybody will know Hindi and Telugu. How many students can speak Hindi? but not Telugu. How many students are there? Those students can speak Hindi, but they can't speak Telugu. So it's a logical question. So all the students can speak at least one language. Number of students who can speak Hindi, but not Telugu, means we'll take the total number of students who speaks Hindi. How many students will speak Hindi? 35. Number of students speak Hindi? 35. Out of which we deduct the students who can speak both Hindi as well as Telugu. So how many students speak Hindi and Telugu? 25. So 35, all the students who speak only Hindi. Only Hindi. Uh, no, uh, number of students speaking Hindi. Sorry. Number of students speaking Hindi are 35. Out of which number of students who spoke both, they can speak Hindi as well as Telugu. 25. So 35 minus 25, remaining 10. These remaining 10 students can speak Hindi but not Telugu. Number of students who can speak Hindi but not Telugu are 10 students. This is only a logical question. No, uh, sim uh, no symbols are required. No notations are required. Simply logically we can think number of students who can speak Hindi are 35 and number of students who can speak both Hindi and Telugu are 25. So subtract 35 minus 25. We can get number of students who can speak only Hindi, not Telugu. That's it. Now, 17th problem. In a group of people, 40 
like tea and 30 like coffee 20 like both so i'll put it in a notation form n of t number of uh, persons who consume tea 40 number of people who consume coffee 30 number of uh, consumers who uh, i mean consume both tea and coffee 20 so 20 people like both tea as well as coffee 20 now how many people like only tea and how many people will like only coffee that is the question now first of all n t union c t union c means how many people will like either tea or coffee either tea or coffee any one so n of t union c is equal to n of t plus n of c minus n of t intersection c that means both so how much is n of t 40 n of c 30 n of t intersection c 20 so 40 plus 30 70 70 minus 20 50 so 50 persons are there who like anyone either tea or coffee 50 people like anyone either tea or coffee now we'll attempt our question first question how many people like only tea how many people like only tea the number of people liking only tea so how many consumers consume tea 40 40 people uh, consume tea how many consume tea and coffee both 20 tea and coffee both 20 persons will consume both they like tea they like coffee so we want how many people like only tea the total number of people who are liking tea 40 and the total number of people who like both the tea and coffee 20 so 40 minus 20 is 20 so 20 people are, will like only tea only tea not coffee similarly number of people liking only coffee number of people will like only coffee so how many people will like coffee 30 30 people will like coffee how many people will like both the tea and coffee 20 20 people will like both tea and coffee now subtract 30 minus 20 10 so 10 people will like only coffee not tea that's it so this is the 17th problem now last one 18th one in a class of 150 students 45 failed in maths 50 in economics and 40 in commerce so three sets are there the sets are maths economics and commerce we put it as m e and c totally 150 students 45 failed in maths so n of m n of m n stands for mathematics so how many students failed 45 failed in maths and 50 failed in economics n of e economics failed 50 students n of c commerce how many students failed in commerce 30 30 no not 30 30 failed uh, sorry 48 48 failed in commerce 48 failed in commerce 30 failed in both maths and economics 30 failed in both maths and economics so m intersection e m intersection e 30 students failed in mathematics and economics then 32 in economics and commerce economics and commerce e intersection c so e intersection c 32 students failed in economics and commerce and lastly 35 failed in maths and commerce m intersection c so m intersection c 35 student failed now lastly 25 failed in all the three subjects 25 failed in all the three subjects maths economics comms the so maths economics comms m intersection e intersection c 25 students so we the given data is put in a notational form now what it is asking you find the number of students failed in at least one subject find the number of students who failed at least in one subject either in maths or in economics or in commerce anyone so there is nothing but n of m union e union c that means failing in either mathematics or economics or commerce so we want union m union e union c 
is equal to already previous problems we have applied the formula m n of m mathematics n of e economics n of c comms number of students failed in mathematics number of students failed in economics number of students failed in comms minus n of m intersection e mathematics and economics and n of e intersection c economics and commerce last one minus n of m intersection c mathematics and commerce plus n of m intersection e intersection c all the three and i failed in all the three subjects now we substitute all the values 45 plus 50 plus 48 45 plus 50 plus 48 minus 30 minus 32 minus 35 minus 30 minus 32 minus 35 plus 25 so we'll get 71 so 71 students are there in the whole class who fails any one of the subject any one of the subject either maths or economics or commerce so here 71 students now second question is passed in all the subjects passed in all the subjects passed in all the subjects means remove the subjects uh, remove the students who have failed who have failed so how many students have failed in any one of the subject 71 71 students are there who failed in any one of the subject that means total number of students are given in the problem 150 so out of 150 out of 150 seven st 71 students have failed in any one of the subject the remaining students have all passed so out of 150 subtract 71 so 150 minus 71 79 so 79 students are there who passed in all the three subjects who have not failed who have not failed total 150 150 minus 70 71 because 71 students are there who failed in any one of the subject either maths or economics or commerce so 79 students are there who completely passed that's all so i have explained you in detail regarding set the first video i have explained you the meaning of the term set elements of set representation of set in roster form and set builder form with examples i have explained then different types of sets like finite infinite null set singleton set equal set equivalent set proper set subset universal set all these i have explained then operations set operations i have explained regarding union of sets then intersection of sets then uh, complement of sets set complement all these things i have explained in the first two videos then three exercises i have done one a one b one c so after doing these uh, problems definitely you can be able to understand you can be able to have the confidence on the topic of set theory so this is the last and final video i wish you all the best for your preparations i'll start the next subject next video afterwards so take care of yourself see you again in the next video if you think that these videos are increasing your knowledge give a like to the video share the video in your friends in your friends circle so that more students can watch the video give your comments and lastly don't forget to subscribe my channel